Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Reverend Sylvester Hampton, one man of God unfiltered. Thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me to spend this time with you. Uh, thank you for um, coming to my channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, today's lesson is going to be uh, love versus reverence. Love versus reverence. I was talking to a, a loved one of mine um, the other day and I'm um, explaining to her about um, um, about loving versus reverencing. Uh, she was trying to tell me that, um, well, I, I, I love my husband and, and, and I wouldn't have married him unless I loved him first and, and I was supposed to marry him and da 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 da. And I was basically trying to tell her that um, it's his job to love you first and then you will grow to love him through your reverence and and the Holy Spirit told me that I need to dig, dig into that a little bit more because uh, there's still a a room room for a confusion and I need to tie that up so here it goes um, but before we start that, you know, you know, this administrator part, um, subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, uh, um, also the notification bell, and also share this channel with someone. Okay, now the difference between, or, or I should say, man is made in the image of God, okay? And I always talked about, I talked about image. I talked about when man, when God made man, he made uh, made man in his image and making man in God's image was um, it's kind of hard to, to make someone in your image without um, um, departing some of your attributes in that person. Now. We know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and the kind of love that God gave the world or so he loved the world was an unconditional love, an agape love. God loved us oh, uh, unconditional. That means that that no matter how what we do, he still loves us. He always give us hope that we will come back to him and, and he... Love has everything to do with it. Tina, I used to do a sermon, um, what does love got to do with it? And I say everything. Everything has to do with love. The kind of love that God has for us is an unconditional love. That's the kind of love that God um, gave man. So God put the kind of love in man that he gave that that he has so the kind of love that that when man finds a wife he finds a good thing the kind of love that god wants man to find when he finds a wife he wants the man to love his wife just as god loved the world so that's an unconditional love so that's the reason why it's very, 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 very important for the man when he finds a wife, he finds a good thing, but he's got to find a wife from a person that's worthy of his love because a person that's worthy of his love will not portray it, okay? Just like we love God. And, and there are heathens out there that, that have an opportunity to come into our camp and, and become saved. Um, all they have to do is to surrender their heathenous ways and turn away from their evil thoughts and evil ways in say, out of Satan's camp and come to God's camp and, and, and open up their minds and hearts to receive God's Holy Spirit and, 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 and they will become saved um, through Jesus Christ. Those are the people that God wants and they'll become saved. But you have to surrender 
and, and, and accept God's love first to become saved. But, but you, you do that and you become closer and closer to God through your, through your reverence. God loves you and love all of us unconditional. So even in our, in the camp of God, even in our, in, in his camp, even though we're saved, sometimes we, we, we go against him and, 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 and we turn our backs and we do some evil things that are not um, within the character of being his child. But we, 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 we gave in to temptation that's not characteristic of his children. But, he, but we ask for forgiveness and we come back. Okay? But we're still on that umbrella. That's how, but we know to come back, okay? Because we know to come back because we reverence him. We reverence God. And because through our experiences of, of going in and out and backsliding, we come to a point where we, we look back through our history, our history and say, dog, Don. And, and realize what God sacrificed and gave his only begotten son for us. And he went to the cross and bought us back, paid for our sins with the price of his blood and his life. And we, we when we first accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we didn't realize what he did for all of us until we realized what he did. And after, after we grow into it and understand and become to have a full understanding of what he did, that draw us closer to him and to, to God. Closer because we realize through our, our adulthood and understanding through our reverence of what he did that draws us closer to him and there's nothing that's between him God and us because there's nothing that can that can that will come between our love for him because we now understand what he did for us and that love that we have for God because of what he did for us it is stronger than than anything that's a bonding. Nothing can come between us. That's the kind of love that you will grow to love your husband. You understand? The same kind of love because you understand that he sacrificed. He goes to work every day for you. Even on the times that he don't want to go to work. But he crucifies himself just as Jesus Christ crucifies himself on the cross for all of us. He crucifies himself. He didn't want to go to work. He wants to stay at home and look at PlayStation and look at the movies all the time. He didn't want to go to work, but he does it anyway because he has a family. He does it because of the people that's in his household. He does it because of you and his family. Everybody that has his last name. He did it because of you. And you see that sacrifice. You see that. And you realize that this man made sure that my children are covered. My children got food on the table. He makes sure that, that if it comes, he gives his life. If something's happening downstairs, a burglar's coming in, he's going to sacrifice his life to come to go to our rescue. He's going to go down there, investigate that burglary, and make sure that his family's safe. Protect that family at, at his risk, at the risk of his life. You see that and you, you realize that and you say, damn, this man is all right. And you grow to love him. That's where you grow to love him because he first loved you. We love God because he first loved us. 
That's the same way that your, your husband, you grow to love your husband, your own husband. Because he demonstrated his love to you because he first loved you and, and you now love him. Because through your reverence to him. But because you were raised by your daddy and you were covered by your daddy. Remember, a girl is never uncovered at all. She's always, she goes from your father's covering to her husband's covering. Because she's coming from her father's covering, she don't know any other way. Because she's covered by her daddy and she knows her daddy's voice and she knows the covering of her father, she already knows what a husband is supposed to be. And she loves her father. She loves her father like no other man because... She loves her daddy and she wants to find a man that makes her feel like her daddy. The safety and the comfort and the protection of her daddy. And she trusts her father. She knows that she she knows that her father will never ever put her into un, in an unsafe environment. She knows it because she lived it her whole life. So, her, her measuring stick is her father when it comes to a man. And she will, she will, um, she's used to her father. That's the reason why her father is going to vet her husband. And she will do, and she knows that her father is never going to give her hand in marriage to anybody that is not going to protect um, her like her daddy did. Because when she and the children, her and her brother laying in bed and, and daddy's not home, once those keys turn the lock and her daddy steps in the house, now she can relax and she knows she's protected. She can go to sleep comfortable because she knows daddy's home. That's the kind of feeling that she wants to feel when she has her husband. That's the kind of feeling that she, she gets used to because she's, un, she's covered by her daddy. That's the kind of feeling that she is going to experience when she gets to her husband because she's used to that. So when, 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 when God says that when a man finds a wife, it's up to the man to find a wife. He's going to be looking, and I always say that man, man, is the one that changes things. You go to the men. The men changes things from one man to another man. I go to a man of God from, from another man of God to find a wife. I'm finding a wife from another man of God because I don't have to train my wife to be a wife because it's coming. she's coming out of a household and already trained to be a wife. She knows what a wife looks like because she was trained by her father. So when I marry her through holy matrimony, through holy matrimony, she's going to come and fit in under my mission that God gave me. I don't have to train her to be a wife because she's already ready to go. She's already trained to be a wife by her daddy. And I and, and for those of you who say, well, a mother's supposed to train her. No, mothers don't train nothing. Mothers don't are not disciplined. That's not their task. Mothers don't teach discipline. That's a lie from the pit of hell. I'll show you why mothers don't treat discipline. Mothers give um, shortcomings excuses. Because they want to be liked. Example. If you go up to a woman and say, 
um, that woman down the street, um, she, she cheated on her husband and she did this and she did that. The first thing she's going to come out of her mouth and say, well, her husband probably did something to make her cheat. It's always somebody else's reason for her doing something. That's automatic. A woman will always give the, 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 another woman an excuse for her shortcomings. She will never, ever hold another woman accountable for what they did. Never. There's always an excuse. And, and, and she will always try to, to put a man in, in, in equal. Um, uh, a woman did this and a woman did that. Well, a man probably made her do it. Or, or you say, um, um, women are not disciplined. Well, because a man's not disciplined. It's always a man's fault. She's always trying to be equal to a man. Um, a woman did this, a woman did that. Well, it's because men do it too. Always trying to be equal to a man. And that's, what, that's, that's their argument. Sign language. Shame, insult, um, guilt. And the need to be right. They will never ever um, discipline anybody. They go to school, you, you um, PTA meetings. Um, a child comes home and said, "My teacher gave me this note to give to you." The note says, um, "Little Johnny is is, uh, is talking in class and disrupting the class." The first thing the mama's gonna say was, "Because you're probably bored." He's he he's probably bored. That's the reason why he's talking. You're boring. It's your fault. The main reason why my son is, is, is talking in class because you're boring. Wrong thing. Wrong thing. Women had no business trying to raise children on their own without the daddy. The daddy would read that note and say, boy, what, what, what's going on with you? How come you're going to pay attention in class? He zeroes in on the fault of the child. The mama will raise, will say, it ain't the child's fault, it's the teacher's fault. That's the difference. Girls are, the women will teach, will, will raise the daughters of how to stay single. Go get your education, girl. You, you don't need to do all that. Uh, do what a man say do? Oh, no, don't do that. And those, those, that's advice from a woman that don't have a husband. That's the reason why they're not supposed to say anything in church. Because they ain't got no husband. Amen. That's the difference. If you have reverence and you're in a household with a head of household is man. And you have a good relationship with your father. And you are under the, the covering of your daddy. You have a whole new different relationship. And you have a whole new different walk and talk. Because you are under the covering of your father. The different covering. You have a whole new different mindset. When it comes to a man. Your, your mindset is totally different. You're approachable. You're going to let that man know, the perfect suitor know, you got to, I don't know, you got to ask my daddy. A true man of God will appreciate that and go ask your daddy because he knows right then he's going to, he, he has, he has wife material. Okay. That's the difference between love and reverence. The love man has love. That's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to love unconditional. He loves a woman. He loves his wife. That's what he is supposed to do as God so loved the world. He, he, he gave his only begotten son. A man loves and gives as God did. Man was made in the image of God and some of God's attributes go through the man. That's the reason why man was given dominion of the earth. Amen. Man was created in the image of God. And he left some of his attributes with man. Let's not get this thing twisted. Men and women are not created equal. 
Woman came out of man. We birthed woman. And, it, and she was not created a, a birth or she was not created with any of vital organs. No brain, no, sir, no, no, no mind, body, or soul. Just a bone. She is not your equal, man. She's a helper. Amen. When you find a wife, you find a good thing. You're supposed to be doing the hunting. You're the prize. I can't say it enough. You are to love her. But you got to love the right woman. And the woman that you fall in love with will not compromise your love. Will not take advantage of your love. That's the reason why you go to a woman that's already know what a how to reverence you. And that's a woman that is covered by her daddy. One covering to your covering. You never ever go to a woman that's not covered. An uncovered woman is an individual and is not a wife. An uncovered woman is not covered by a man and she don't know how to handle a man. She's an individual and she's a boss woman and she is a woman that is going to come to you and she feels that she's equal to you. And a, and a household with two heads is a monster movie. Amen? It never worked. Never. God don't talk to a helper. A helper was only designed to help the man that God has already talked to. He's given you all the tools that you need to accomplish your mission. You don't need a helper to raise your children. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You don't need that. You, I told you the Bible is a show and tell. You're showing your children what a head of household looks like. Showing them. And because you have the attributes of God already, you speak it out of your mouth. You ain't got to use no force. You ain't got to use no threats, no nothing. Because they have reverence to you already. Reverence. Reverence is a respect. And through that respect grows love. Just as we respect God, we know that God will never leave nor forsake us because we have grown in the word and we've seen him get us out of all kinds of trouble, but he still loves us and we feel his love for us and there's no turning back. Nobody, but nobody can't tell us that we're not a child of God. That's how, that's how your wife and your children feel about you as a man of God. Because you're showing them and telling them how you are. And your daughter is growing up looking for a man just like her daddy. And when you're taken out of the picture and you you are robbed of the presence of your children or your children robbed of the presence of you, they are totally, totally lost. A woman has no business raising children on her own without you. None. It's impossible. Because the children will be uh, have a void in their lives without you. You're the key to their success. You're the key to their happiness. And they don't know anything and they will never find happiness without you. They will not know joy. Because 
you bring them joy, you bring them completeness, and you bring them discipline. And they will know love only through you as the man of God. Amen. That's how it works. It's just a simple thing. God made things simple for us because we are not, we're pea brains. Our brains are pea brains compared to his infinite wisdom. So he has to use his, his word to try to keep us in line. That's our guidebook. And he uses the guidebook as different examples to keep us in line. That's his GPS system for us. Okay. And, and because he left us men in charge, gave us dominion. That means in charge of everything. And he uses man as a tool, as his tool to keep the world in line. And, and he uses us as the head and everybody is supposed to follow us as we follow him. Um, we know that if we, we deviate and we mistreat the people that are under us that we're supposed to protect, we know that God is going to kill us. We know that. So we, we dare not do that. That's not our nature. That's not our nature. But Satan wants to want our help me to believe that is our nature. Don't forget the help me is is that's that's their that is their default. Their their default is always say, well, he, the man does it. Oh, oh, the, the, never accountability for the for each other the woman. Never give the ch children accountability. Always an excuse of shortcomings. Men, there that we don't have that. That's not our nature. What the enemy does is that he tries to take the divineness away from God. To take the divineness away from God and His Word, he tries to make God equal to man. And when you try to make God equal to man, you're trying to make God's logic equal to man. And God's logic is not man's logic. His, 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 his logic and wisdom is infinite. So just, just like me, for example, I, I was going to do another lesson. The Holy Spirit said, no, uh -uh, I don't want you to do that. I want you to go right back and explain um, uh, love and reverence. Break that down. You didn't break that down enough. There's still some, some room in there for wiggle room. Go back and explain it more. And I did. I, I, I fought with him enough. Like all last year, I, I've learned my lesson. Don't fight with the Holy Spirit. Just do what you're told. And I, I've learned that. So whenever he tells me I don't fight, I, I don't, because my brain is not that, that I'm not that smart. He's so smart. He's so much more smarter than me. And even if I, I defy him, I wouldn't be, in, and I tried to get the words out, the, the lessons that I taught, it would sound gibberish. I would sound like a fool because I didn't do what he told me to do. And I, 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 I know better. I know better. I'm in his service. Period. I know. So that's how the closeness of whenever you pick a wife and in your household, that's how the closest of your household is supposed to be. And that's how your daughter knows how she is supposed to be with a husband. She's supposed to be a helper to her husband. Because she wants to find someone just like her daddy. And, and, and to protect her. And she knows that her husband will. She has that same feeling that she feels about her husband just like he, your, her daddy felt, how she feels about her daddy. 
she knows that her husband got her back and her protector. That's because she reverenced her daddy, respect her daddy, and she grew to love her daddy because of his actions. Show and tell. The Bible show and tell. So she feels the same way and she's looking for the same thing in her husband. She knows that her daddy will never give her to a man that does not like her daddy. So she's going to automatically go with this husband and do wifely duties as she has been raised by her daddy to do. Amen. That's how it works. See, God has a, 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 a blueprint that's mighty sweet and so simple. All we got to do is follow it. It's not anything difficult. And let me tell you something. His blueprint is foolproof and it's so smooth. And don't get his blueprint and stop trying to compare his blueprint to the world. Stop trying to compare that to the world. Because what the enemy tries to do is compare it to him and try to um, um, take the divinity of God away by trying to make, make God, bring God's wisdom down to a man's common sense. And that is to make, make you think, put God's infinite wisdom onto your level. It's never going to work. It's never going to work. So just go with God's one truth. The only truth. His one truth. God will never leave nor forsake you. Just go with the flow. Because it's so much easier. He makes it so much easier. Just go with his blueprint. You ain't got to understand it. You grow to understand it. Just do what you're told. Just go with it. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. You know that your, your mama and daddy um, would um, will never bring any harm to him because he they love their children. You know that. God loves you just the same. More. He gave you a blueprint to go by. Your mom and daddy set rules in their household saying if you do this, you come home from school, you do your homework, you do this, do that, you're not going to get a whipping. Well, if you do that, you didn't get, you don't have to worry about getting a whipping. But if you go against it, you're going to get a whipping. Same thing with God, just go by his rules. You know, as we, we grow up and, and we think back to our parents. A lot of us will think that, say, damn, we were poor and I didn't even know it. We were poor and I didn't even know it. That's because the parents um, kept a lot of stuff from you. You didn't know your mom went home, went to bed sick. I mean, went to bed hungry every night. You didn't know your daddy went to bed hungry every night. You didn't know that. He kept that from you. Well, you didn't know that when your daddy got home, that that food that your mama saved on the side, um, on on the side, the first thing he says is the kids get enough to eat, and he gave your mama instructions that if the kids want to get something to eat, you make sure that they eat. They want something more. Make sure that their their bellies are full. Don't worry, I'll find something. We can find something in there. I don't care. We, we can fix some grits and eggs. Or just have grits. You know, you don't know. Your mom and daddy made sure that that, that his kids the kids are taken care of. You don't know the sacrifices. That were made for you. 
That's love. And I ask you, what does love got to do with it? And I'll say everything. What does love got to do with it? And I'll tell you everything. So when a man is, is to love a woman, unconditional love a woman, that is his help per meet. When a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. You just make sure you're that good thing. And, the, and he's supposed to find a wife from the hands of her father who's already trained her as a wife because she's going from under his umbrella to your husband's umbrella. That's how it works. That's how it works. That's the difference between love and reverence. Amen. Reverence will turn into love. You don't start out, woman doesn't start out loving like the like the uh, Disney cartoon type um, fairy tale stuff. It's much deeper. It's divinely guided. Amen. I want you to know that I'm still on the battlefields for the souls of our family. I want you to know that my ministry's men and I, I my ministry's men because through men is the only channel by which things will change and things are supposed to happen. Men are the guiding light to society because men were is who God left dominion to this world too, and men are um, God's tool to change and to maintain, and through men is where God's legacy flow. The only flow. Amen. I want you to know that I love you. Nothing you can do about it. Until the next time, this is Reverend Sylvester Hampton, one man of God unfiltered. You have a nice one. See you later. Bye-bye.